Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you. More than 12,000 Albanians, mostly young men, have arrived in the UK on small boats in the last year. There has been fierce political argument about the best way to stop them coming and indeed how best to send them home, especially those with no legitimate claim to stay here. But why are so many people from a safe country risking an expensive and very dangerous journey? Newsnight's been to Albania to find out why they're leaving. We rarely hear from these men until now. Newsnight has spoken to one, an economic migrant, who arrived in the UK illegally on a small boat and was rapidly deported. He met Newsnight's international correspondent Joe Inwood in the Albanian capital, Tirana. Albania is one country, but two societies, rich and poor side by side. The capital, Tirana, is not the world most here live in. Despite its beauty, it is a place many seem to want to escape. More than a third of the people born here now live abroad. The route out for many is the road to France, then on to the UK. This footage was filmed by a man we're calling Artan, on his way to meet the smugglers he had paid for passage to Dover. There were several traffickers, all armed with knives and pistols. They were repeatedly threatening us, saying not to film anything and not even to smoke. The money had been agreed in advance via a UK WhatsApp number. We paid three and a half thousand pounds each. What you're about to see and hear is rare. Unlike most who arrived from Albania, Artan did not claim asylum. He admitted to coming to the UK as an economic migrant and was deported within days. We've agreed not to identify him as he fears reprisals from the gangs. The journey across the channel was torture. It was cold, stormy and incredibly scary. It took us almost an hour to get the dinghy going, by which time traffickers had all left. A French police boat appeared 20 minutes into our journey. They accompanied us from a distance of maybe 200 meters, just observing, which reassured us. They stayed for three hours, maybe longer. Then we crossed into UK waters and called the British police. They told us they were coming to get us, that we mustn't panic. They behaved well and seemed very welcoming and polite. We jumped to the UK police boat where we got life vests. The numbers crossing have risen sharply over the past year. Albanians now make up the single largest group arriving in small boats, 12,000 and counting. It's led to furious arguments, with the British Home Secretary calling it an invasion and the opposition accusing the government of incompetence. What is less discussed is why people are leaving their homes and risking a dangerous and illegal journey. To try and understand, there is only one place to start. We're traveling north to a region called Kukes, just on the border with Kosovo. This is the part of Albania where many of the young men and women who've left for the UK have come from. Indeed, so many have left from the region, there are now real concerns around depopulation. You can see it at Kukes' football team. The under-17s have enough for a few sides. By the time they get to under-19, there are barely 11 players left. Uh, in our country, there is so many problems and uh, so many can't uh, follow their dream here, so they choose to go to go outside the country. Why do you feel that you want to leave this region? Because this place is terrible. No future, no future. I asked, why is that? People will look around and this, you have a, a lovely stadium here and a good pitch. It seems, when well, I just to the outsider, it seems nice. What is the problem? The problem is people. People is so bad. It's terrible. Gosh, um... He switches to Albanian to tell me that the problem is criminals and corrupt people. Our youth here, all they think about is one thing, leaving. Maybe it's because they've lost all hope. I really don't know. I really don't know how to make sense of it all. 
For the team coach, the situation is personal. As well as losing many of his players, both of his children have travelled to the UK. It's painful to talk about it. It touches us all, straight in our hearts. It scratches our wounds. My own children have left. We are left alone here. It's a huge problem. We have to get beyond politics as well. When I see what's happening, we used to have a good intake, and now we can barely form a team. It really hurts. The main reason people give for leaving is a lack of economic opportunity. Average wages in Albania are just over $500 a month. According to the opposition, corruption is also a huge problem, with government inaction to blame. So why do you think young people are leaving this country in such numbers? They believe that the system that exists is not fair. Meritocracy does not exist. Uh, they don't have economic opportunities. Uh, it's very difficult for social mobility. If you are born poor in Albania, you remain poor independently of how much you work. And we should acknowledge that as politicians, it's linked with high corruption, uh, especially in the north of the country, it's li uh, linked with the lack of opportunities. Uh, and this is something up to the government. So this is Kukas at night, and as you can see, it's pretty quiet. The few people that are in bars and restaurants are generally on the older side. You can see why all the young people leaving this city is such a problem. The question is, what can be done about it? The current focus of the British government is law enforcement and deportations, something they say they are working closely on with the Albanian authorities. But Artan is one of a relatively small number of Albanians to have actually been sent home. Only 440 were returned in the first half of the year, and only a tiny proportion of them at short notice. I was told, tomorrow morning you will arrive in Tirana. At that moment, I was so upset, I can't describe it. I felt like my brain was exploding, and I could do nothing about it all. There were three more policemen who stayed just with me while I was waiting on the bus. I told them, we haven't killed anybody. What's this all about? Okay, you want to escort us, but we're not terrorists. I have never had any problems with the authorities. I have never broken the law. Although, presumably, at that point you realised you had committed a crime because you'd entered the UK illegally. Yes, that's understandable, and ultimately that's why they deported us. But nevertheless, we had hoped that they might show us some compassion. But for many, this is the problem. Backlogs mean that just claiming asylum is essentially a ticket to stay in the UK. The British government claims the system is widely abused. Their opponents say it is their failures that are to blame. In Albania, there are calls for more safe and legal routes. Law enforcement does not work. Policies do not work. A border control does not work. There should be a legal system, like a normal way for these people not to oblige uh, to do so. Uh, there should be a fast track in terms of uh, uh, procedures, as we have with other EU countries. We did ask the Albanian government for an interview, but no one was available. Many believe the authorities here should be doing more to encourage people to stay in places like Kukes. For its part, the UK government has set up a project costing £8 million pounds over four years, designed to help. That scheme has only been running a couple of months, so has yet to show results. But we can see the sort of thing they're hoping to emulate. This is Malizia Zanave, an agro-tourism operation set up by two brothers who themselves crossed to Italy in small boats in the 1990s, returning years later with money to start a business. And step by step, we invested what we have profits here. And in 12 years, we made it what you see. Now, Marizia Zanave is famous throughout Albania. What is the solution to this problem, as far as you see it? Uh, I don't think the solution will come quickly. This will be a slow process. It starts with improving our education system and making economic development fair. Albania's problems will not be solved by businessmen building skyscrapers, petrol stations or malls. I believe we can stop the hemorrhaging of our young people by developing our rural areas and building a sustainable tourism industry. This is undoubtedly a huge Albanian success story. 
45,000 euros made in Italy, brought back here and turned into a business oh employing hundreds, God. maybe more than a thousand people and this. turning over three million euros a year. The question, though, is can something like this be replicated across this country in a way that makes young Albanians want to stay here? This is it propaganda. Is a challenge for Tirana, where everyone knows corruption is a big problem, but one that is incredibly hard to tackle. As for the British government, as long as asylum applications are taking years to process, no amount of tough talk will stop the gangs. What would your message be to other young Albanians thinking of following in your footsteps of doing what you did? I would not recommend taking small goats to anyone. It was an unimaginable terror. For certain, I'd say don't choose the dinghy. If there is a legal way, with a visa, then yes, leave. But please, never think about leaving on a dinghy. Over the last few nights, Tirana has experienced astonishing lightning storms, an analogy maybe for this whole debate. The situation is leaving Albanian towns hollowed out, robbed of their youth. It is also making already fractious British politics more tempestuous still. The only thing all sides can really agree on is that the current situation isn't working for anyone except the people smugglers making huge profits risking other people's lives let's get live to Toronto uh, now that's enough